So this video is going to look at the three different types of coordinate systems that are popular for use in dynamics. They are the Cartesian, the normal tangential and the polar coordinate system. So we're going to start with the Cartesian one, which is probably the most familiar, um, which is this in 2D, the XY coordinate system. So typically X is your horizontal axis and Y is your vertical axis. So we have unit vectors that we use uh, in all of the different coordinate systems. So for X, Y, we have the I unit vector, which tells you the component in the X direction. And in the Y direction, we have the J unit vector. So if we want to describe velocity and acceleration uh, in the Cartesian system, we can do so using the following equations. So velocity is simply equal to x dot i plus y dot j. So x dot is essentially how fast you're moving in the x direction and y dot is how fast you're moving in the y direction. So we have similar equations for the acceleration. like so. In this case we just have the second derivative of x which is your position and the second derivative of y which is again your position. So essentially the acceleration is just separated into x and y components. So we'll move on to the normal tangential coordinate system um, which is probably um, unfamiliar. So this one is useful when you have something moving on a circular path. So anytime you see circular motion questions or something going around a bend um, consider the normal tangential coordinate system. So for this one, I'll give you an example where I have a particle or a mass or something traveling on a path. And say I'm interested in what's happening at this particular point here. So when setting up my axes, oh, that was a bit messy, I put the T direction as being in the direction of motion, so essentially where the velocity is going at that point. All right, and that's why it's called the tangential, because it's tangent to that path. The normal vector goes 90 degrees to that and toward the center of the circle. All right, so in this case, if this was a big circle here, its center would be somewhere out here. All right, and that's where I should always point my normal vector toward. So let's just quickly note that down. So T should be pointed in the direction of motion. and n is pointed toward the center of the circular path that it makes at that point. So again, we have unit vectors associated with this coordinate system. So we have ET, which is in the T direction, and we have EN, which is in the N direction. So the reason that we would want to use the normal tangential coordinate system is because when we get to looking at the velocity and acceleration, um, we have some forms of the equation which are quite convenient. So for velocity, um, we can write it as v e t. All right, so there's only a tangential component here, no normal component. And that's because of the way we've defined it, we've said that the t direction is in the direction of the velocity. So this is the velocity of the particle. All right. Oops. V. So for acceleration, we have two components. We have the tangential component and the normal component. So the tangential component is equal to v dot. So essentially the acceleration in the t direction. And in the normal direction, 
our component is equal to V on R. All right. Sorry, V squared on R. All righty. So in this case, V again is just the velocity of your particle or whatever it is. And R is the radius of the circle it's on. So in this case, this dimension here would be the radius. So as I said, this type of coordinate system is quite useful when you have something that's moving in a circular pattern or circular motion, um, just because you have this more convenient expression for its velocity and the radius of the path. So the last coordinate system is the polar one. And this is typically used for things that are rotating. So let's give an example where we have some kind of bar and it's going to rotate. So if we were to set up a coordinate system on this, what we'd normally do is go like this. So R is going to be in the direction of the bar essentially and theta is going to be 90 degrees to that. So this coordinate system is quite useful if for example your bar was able to extend because then that extension would be completely in that R direction and then theta would then measure the um, rotation or the rate of rotation um, of that bar. So let me just quickly mark that in. Oops. So R points in the direction of extension or retraction if it's applicable. And theta measures the rotation. Alright, so again we have unit vectors associated with this coordinate system. We have ER, which is in the R direction, and we have E theta, which is in the theta direction. Alright, and again we have some special equations that we can use um, if we want to find the velocity or the acceleration when we're using this system. So for velocity, we have both a radial and a tangential component. Sorry, not tangential, a theta component. So we can rewrite this as r dot er plus r theta dot e theta. All right. So in this case, r, oh, r here is how fast your point um, that you're measuring, so say you're measuring the point on the end of the bar, is moving away or toward our origin back here. And theta dot is how fast it's rotating um, itself. So similarly for acceleration, we have two components. And these can be written as... Oops, sorry. Yeah, no, it's right. R theta dot squared. All right, so it's R double dot minus R theta dot squared, and then R theta double dot to R dot theta dot e theta. All right. So again, this type of system is useful if you're given information like um, how far something is extending or retracting, how fast it's rotating. This would probably be the most appropriate system. So that's all I've got about the coordinate systems. Um, I'm going to complete a few different questions using each of them um, in the subsequent videos. See you there.